And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest jet show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from Neverboard Games and the creator of the upcom of the upcoming the upcom the upcoming swap the upcoming privateering game Old Salt. So so ready the cannons and it's debatable whether or not this man is the last of Barrett's privateers. <laughs> the one and only Tim Ferry the third. How are you doing today, man? Not too shabby. Thanks for having me on the show, Mildred. Really appreciate it. I had to get I had to get that one. Sh Thank you for coming on. I had to get that one joke out of my system because <laughs> to um to pr to prep for this to prep for this in this interview, there were um there were two bands I had on I had on a um shorter playlist. Um, one of the one of them was the Longest Johns who do a lot who do a lot of shanties, mm. and mm -hmm. the other one of course is Alestorm. Oh yeah, um, who that's like, awesome. Who and of course, um, I don't. I was also tempted to bring in the dr to to throw in the Dread Crew of Oddwood, but I figured that'd be a bit overkill. So <laughs> potentially. So old old salt. Um, ver I'll um I'll get one bad joke out of my system. Do you have? Do you ever do you play with do you play with a hurdy gurdy playing in the background? Uh no, I do not, but I I have enjoyed having epic orchestra in the background. <laughs> <laughs> really gets those tensions rolling. Yeah, I, I I can get I can get that. I it's one it's given the given the fact that that um that particular that particular instrument was was used a lot around that time and is used frequently in the soundtrack for um the Black Sails uh, TV series. I figured oh, I yeah. get that on my system. The, the Hurdy Gurdy's <laughs> Run is one of the best instruments with one of the most unfortunate names. It's a fun name. I don't think anyone's getting it tattooed on themselves anytime soon, but no. it's a cool name. Um, in the old days, it was used as the as the replacement for a for a uh, pipe organ for ch for churches that were too small for one. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a very interesting kind of device it's like it's like a it's like a mix between between a between a piano and a hand crank oh that is fun oh um, but the i often start with the humble beginnings mm -hmm. so with the, with that in mind um what i'd like to, i'd like to first ask what got where what got you into um the what got you into board game design and what and um what prompted using um s using well swashbuckling as your um as as the ba as the basis for old salt definitely that's a it's a good question um i never really set out at the beginning to make a board game and bring it to kickstarter and all of this stuff but it originated with a D&D &D campaign that dungeons and dragons 5e uh as all or most campaigns typically go, they ended up dropping out at level seven. But I had made plans for like a level twenty campaign ender encounter, and I was like, "All right, we're gonna have like a hundred ships versus a hundred ships. It's gonna be epic, and the players are gonna be like on one side or the other." Um, <laughs> so I didn't feel like having a two hundred plus initiative order for D and D, so I started making my own kind of like standalone system. And the more I fleshed it out. I didn't even need to use it for this. And then when that campaign dropped, I was like, might as well make a prototype just to see if it would have worked or not. Mm -hmm. And then played it with the buddies that were in the campaign because we we're all still friends. We just didn't have time to play D&D &D anymore. Um, but they were like, Tim, this is actually pretty solid. Like, you should probably keep working with this and see what we can do. I was like, okay, all right, sounds good. And so we'd have board game nights where we'd play like Blood Rage or Viticulture, and then I'd pop out my blue graph paper with drilled in risk pieces or something like that. It's <laughs> just tragically different, but they they enjoyed it. And so I just kept fleshing it out one step to another. Uh, eventually, just kind of the next right step or the next right thing. I did that for four years, and now I'm here with a swashbuckling game that was just from a D and D uh, encounter. <laughs> 
since you mentioned that, I'm curious. I'm curious at all if you, if in your um, gaming library, if you have Ghost of Salt Marsh. I do not. I haven't even heard of it, but I'm going to write that down to check into it. Um, that was, that had an official attempt at um, at naval combat, but obvious, obviously, there's been pl there's been plenty of third party attempts as well. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing it now. Yep. I think I've peruse this after someone was like you know they have this right and i was like i didn't know they had that mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been helpful definitely yeah now with with that with that um that ends up answering one of the other questions that I, that i that i was going to have because when i think of um when i think of um swashbuckling and um and fi and this and that kind of fantasy um, one of the big one of the big things that comes to mind is a sp is a spinoff of Warhammer Fantasy battle called um, Man of War. Um, mm. Were you at all familiar with that, or was or was that or is that in the things to look up later? Um, that is also in the things to look up later, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, writing that down now as well. <clears throat> so, with the with that in with that in mind, um, when it came to when it came to the early creation of um, Old Salt, did you did where did you only intend for it to be just the um, ship combat, and then you and then you expanded into things like factions and and trade and trade wins and the like? Yes. Um, so I originally had uh, it was almost like event based it, situations that would happen throughout the game and they were like just kind of groupings of different clusters of like this could be wreckage or this could be damage if you're in here um and then the factions didn't come until i think it was a play test in austin texas because i had moved from iowa to austin and they were like you know what would really make this game good or better and i was like what and they're like you should definitely have factions i was like that's a solid idea because originally it was just ships and they're like shoot them up and kind of battle it out because it was still a play on that original D and D encounter, and so adding in factions really made it a really fun depth. But it also wasn't required in order to actually enjoy the game. So now I have that awesome, or I think it's awesome, but some people may think otherwise. But where you can add in the factions if you're comfortable, but if you're playing with like a nine year old or someone who's just like not comfortable with strategy games, you can only play with ships, and it's still old salt, and it's still a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, factions were added in f later on, about a year after starting to develop it. Mm -hmm. And then trade wins, they were just modified because movement was super important. So I was like, all right, we're going to change these little events that like hurt people or help people to just being movement based. And it, I think it came together pretty well, a lot better than random events. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, you've just, you've... Descri you've described the game. You've described the game as, as ha as having e having elements of um, deck building, and fleet management. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I'd like to, I'd like to I'd like to delve into um, how the, how those things manifested within the game. Yeah. So there's five different ship types in the game. There's the grunt, zealot. And they all kind of do a different. They're almost all a flex off of the grunt. So like the zealot gets a free shot, but otherwise it's exactly like the grunt. The hazard, when it blows up, or when it dies, it blows up. So that otherwise it's the same. Leviathan has extra hit points, and then the marksmen just have a shifted range. But when you start the game, you can opt into a pre-selected faction fleet if you want to just go that way. But if you want to do flexing that deck building kind of concept, you can make your own fleet which is, I think, a lot of fun. And I think it's a really strong point of the game where you kind of draft your fleet that you want to have, and you only get like seven or eight ships max. So we're not talking about like a whole 100 versus 100 like I originally intended, but eight ships is still a fair bit in this game. It kind of it can get crowded. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you could go all grunts. You could go all marksmen and just keep everyone at bay. You can do a hybrid. So a lot of, I guess, I would say that deck building where you get a deck build your fleet <laughs> but it's just ship tokens instead all right <clears throat> and it's it sounds like it sounds like no matter what there is a rule there is a rule of seven 
Uh, typically. So it's amount of like how many ships or how many points you want to spend. So sometimes you could be like, we want to do a light quick game and we're only going to do like 12 or 13 points. Or you could do a longer match with like 18 or 19. And that would kind of pick how many ships you're able to get. And given the given the um, given the whole fact given the whole um, faction thing, now there are there are six factions to total as I as I understand it. Yes. Yep. Um, and e each of them each of them have their own have their own sets of passive and active abilities. Um, mm -hmm. What I what I'd like to delve into is. What is the kind is the kind of play style that each faction would fit would favor? Yeah. So and I'll st I'll start with the barbarians. Okay. The barbarians, I would say, I always think of them as like a movement civilization or a movement faction where they limit or enhance or block. So they have this battle cry where no one can sail into their area because they're just screaming so loud and scaring people off. Uh, but they also have a grappling hook that pulls people in. So, like, if you want people to be away from you, you can do battle cry. If you want people to be closer to you, you can do grappling hook. Um, yeah, I'd say they're like a movement. So, if you want to control control the situation, I would go barbarians. Next would be the bootleggers. If you want to be annoying, <laughs> they have this raid ability that you can kind of spam i've i've nerfed it a little bit so it's not as bad as it used to be but you can technically spam it a lot um and basically you can either like ruin someone's sale ability or you can take coin from them or you can damage them and they get to choose which kind of helps with that spamming ability but if someone's about to go for the island and you want to try to stop them they might take that damage instead of a coin uh, but it's kind of a fun ability and then they also have uh kind of a treasure hunting ability but I would say overall, they're pesky, pesky, annoying <laughs> to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, next would be the elite. Oh goodness. Okay, so if you love tight knit strategy, the elite are for you. Uh, their kit is all about grouping, but not grouping too much because sometimes it can be really dangerous. But if you want to feel like the British on Pirates of the Caribbean, albeit they are kind of the bad guys, but like just orderly. And tighten it. There's a lot of strategy for them. All right, then next would be the engineers. These guys, it's a little tricky. They're I. If you want something that can be a little forgiving, uh, they're the only ones that can salvage destroyed ships, which can heal up your ships just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need some like forgiveness or like you know what we made a mistake there, but we're recovering it, I would play the engineers. Mm -hmm. And next would be the Eternal. They, I mean, based off of their faction ability, if you like magic, <laughs> not Magic the Gathering, but just like the sorcery, Harry Potter style stuff, the Eternals are all about it. Mm -hmm. uh, they can teleport across the map with their transcended ships. Uh, so if you like quick movement or just like, oh, Vengeful is also a really good, good one. Because if you destroy one of their ships, they can send in reinforcements that very next turn. So you could kill one, and then six of them pop up the next turn. You're like, ah, what have we done? So very vengeful, but a lot of magic. Yeah. And lastly is the Forgotten. These guys are the rogues of the game. Uh, they have free retreat abilities and free uh, debris. So if you shoot at one, they can run away for free. And then they can also drop debris to slow down any pursuit that you give. So rogue uh, and elusive and all of that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And with now with that with all of that with all that in mind, um, when it came to, when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes when it comes to the whole no, the whole notion of um, trade wins, as I as I understand it, trade wins. Um, sailing on the, sailing on those allows you to get extra movement than just the rule of three that you would get normally. Correct. Um, but is is it a case where they're where they're constantly active, or are they, or are they constantly shifting between active and inactive as the as on um, play continues? No, that's a great question. Uh, so starting at round two, you're going to have your stack of trade win tokens. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so you'll pick the top one off. And so you'll randomize them at the beginning. Uh, so you'll have like red, blue, green, all that stuff, or middle, south, and north, however you want to talk about it. But uh, you'll just take the top one off. And everyone will see the entire stack from top to bottom. They'll know what's coming. Almost like a farmer's almanac of like, in three years, it's, the locusts are going to be really bad or something like that. That's kind of how I'm playing this game. Not very much luck, a lot of strategy, mm -hmm. but so you can calculate. Um, so let's say you take the top one off and it's red and you would take that, put it next to the red trade wind. That would be active. And round three, let's say it's another red one. Then you would take that and you would deactivate red. So there would no be no bonus. So only when they get duplicated are they removed. But otherwise, you could have all three. Like if the next one was blue instead of red, mm -hmm. and then round four was green, then you'd have all trade winds active. And then the next round, the next color, whatever it is, is going to deactivate one of them. And give, given that, is it is it theoretically possible to have all three trade winds active, even if it's it does? Around? Yes, it does happen from time to time. Yeah, which is very fun because you're just like, we got a lot of movement we can do. A lot of things can happen. Now, the other, I will I will admit that one something something else that kind of came to mind when I when I looked at the flow of the game, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to coin distribution, is um in a weird way RTSs. Oh the yeah. Main reason, the main reason I bring that up is there's there's always the whole thing of resource generation, but capturing control points allows you to get more uh, um, resources. True. Yes, <clears throat> kind of like that Dawn of War, uh, Warhammer 40k. Well, d well, um, at the at the very at the very least, the um the fir the first batch, the um, the first I'll say the first two games, the second the uh, third one, we don't talk about that. I love the old ones, so that's all I'll ever talk about. <laughs> <laughs> the Battle Sisters and all of that's that's good times. Um, if you ever get the chance, I would recommend looking at the Unification mod. Okay, I'll write it down. Um, I'm getting a list. <laughs> that's that's for I'll there's there was a lengthy video exp explaining it, but um, suffice to say, it take it takes Soulstorm and makes it um suck less. <laughs> <laughs> no problems there. <laughs> but what? But given 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 that um and given the and given the sh and given these ships was one of your. One of your goals to to make sure that people had to balance between keeping ships near islands to protect them from get from getting taken over, but still needing to go on the offensive with um, taking their own islands. Yeah, yeah. So it used to be you used to be rewarded by not doing anything because sailing used to cost coin, which in hindsight was really dumb. That was me just being like, oh yeah, if you want to do anything, it costs coin. But if you fire and all that stuff. So once I got rid of sailing as a cost and now ships are like, you know, ships are made to sail so you can sail it. It kind of removed the the reward of hanging back. Um, and also with that, there's a mast system. So you can't take an island either uncontrolled or your enemies without killing one of their ships. Mm -hmm. So sitting back and not doing anything really doesn't benefit you a whole lot unless if you really just want to stockpile. Like the Barbarians' last stand ability, they kind of like to stockpile just because they can unload. They can fire as many times as they want when they're in that last stand mode. But that's it. Everybody else, and typically the Barbarians, also want to get out there and do stuff as well because they're that movement-based civilization. Um, so I think overall, you're not rewarded by sitting tight and waiting for the enemy to come to you. And with within that, when it comes to when it comes to get when it comes to getting gold, um, would it be correct of me to assume that um, the three coin minimum was um, what was correct is correcting an oversight that happened early on? Uh, it. I guess you could say it was an oversight. My thing i originally had it so like if you had two islands you'd only get two gold mm -hmm. but you would always get at least one but then you would have the runaway leader a lot quicker so somebody takes your island they now have four you have two they're getting twice as much income and it's impossible to come back so that floor is to correct that mm -hmm. so that you are still in the game no matter what the thing that i don't like is that if you have no islands you still get three coins because that doesn't make sense to me, but it definitely keeps people in the fight. Yeah, 
and with and even and even with and um, I'm guessing because I'm guessing in the same in the same vein because of because of because of that um, rate when it comes to coins and the fact that even fi even firing on on a ship costs a coin is or as well as um as well as seizing islands costs coins is mm -hmm. would would you say it's a case where where um it's where it's going to be very rare for somebody to be able to activate and u and utilize their entire fleet they have to pick and choose um so right now in the base game i have it so you can only move three ships or you can only sail three ships per turn and that was only because of analysis paralysis. People would have too many options, and so they just would sit there for like 10 minutes and be like, I don't know what ships to move. And I was like, you can move any of them or none of them. It's up to you. Do whatever you want. <laughs> um, so then what happened is I wanted to get rid of analysis paralysis, wanted to just kind of streamline the game a little bit. So I capped it to three, and it sped up game time significantly. Uh, people are like, all right, I only get three ships, so here's what I'm going to do, because this is the most important three priorities that I got to do. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't, unless if you're modifying it, which I do have a page in the rulebook of like reading the room, which is all about adding or removing things to match the skill level of the players. Um, there's probably a better way to say that, but essentially, like if someone's not comfortable playing a strategy game, you can remove the factions, you can remove the stern bow penalties, or if someone's really comfortable, you can move all of your ships, because you're able to kind of comprehend all of it and get it and be good to go uh, but base game is only three ships you can't technically use all of your fleet every single turn mm -hmm. and with that with that in with that in mind um when it came to when it came to what the what the faction abilities bring in um mm -hmm. I know, I know that you made, fa I know that you made faction abilities an optional thing. But were there, were there some factions that early on you um, ended up, be ended up being a little bit too useful? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, the barbarians. They used to have a ramming ability, mm -hmm. which was very broken, even despite multiple attempts to nerf it and pull it back. Uh, but essentially, their movement could be a weapon. So they had a free weapon because i made sailing free which broke that system mm -hmm. um and they could not only take out a whole ship in one time in one turn so they would ram it from three tiles away they would do three damage one to themselves but it i don't know it's just broken so some of those abilities like that were just way too useful way too helpful for them and broke them <laughs> now when it comes to when it, now um when it comes to the um, when it comes to the usual amount of players for the, for mm -hmm. this particular game, um, as I understand it, the def the default is two or more. But how um does it does it end? Did you have cases where playing end up end up getting bogged down when you had four players, or was that not something that happened? Yeah, so I capped it actually to four players. Uh, two to four players is what I put on the box or is it will be putting on the manufactured box and that's only because it gets bogged down after four players um so like i teaching four people is kind of tough because that'll take a, a bit of time um but for experienced players goes a lot quicker because everyone kind of knows what's going on uh but six players even if they know what they're doing takes just way too long mm -hmm. um so i think eventually maybe what i'll do is make like you know how they have Catan, the six player expansion where it has like you can do stuff in between other people's turns or like they have that like community round mm -hmm. i'll eventually probably do something like that to incorporate more players but for now just capping it to two to four and then i'll fix that in the future but it definitely does work two to four it's just mm -hmm. gets bogged after that yeah now within now within that within that setup now as i understand it there are th there are um three there are three and there are three um end game there are three end game um setups mm -hmm. one is get is getting six islands yep um two is be is being the last player standing because mm -hmm. uh, obviously nobody nobody can compete against you getting the other six <laughs> islands if they if all if they're all sunk mm -hmm. um or th or three um depleting the trade win stack yes which in that in that regard, would you would you say that the 
that the trade win that the trade win stack acts as the game's timer. Yes, one hundred percent. Uh, just in case if the game wasn't active enough and people weren't really attacking enough as what you know other people might do, I didn't want it to drag on like a risk where it's like you're spending your entire Saturday afternoon playing risk. I, risk is fun, but it can take a long time to actually finish. So I wanted that hard cap of like worst case scenario, you got eight rounds and that's it. And after that, you can kind of go from there. But it definitely is a hard cap. And with the, with that kind of thing in mind, have have when it comes, obviously it's obviously it's only a ma- it's only a matter of time with any board game before people start doing house rules or put their own cra- or put their own crazy ideas into custom games. Mm-hmm. Um, has something like that has something like that um, cropped up in consideration for old for old salt? Yes. Um, so I want to encourage it as much as possible. I like the idea that my game's a sandbox and people can flex it, which is also why I have that reading the room. It should encourage people to flex things if they would like to. Um, also, on top of that, I'm going to have the nine campaign missions, but I'm also going to include blank missions if people want to fill in their own descriptions, objectives, and things that they want to do Um in an effort to have a full homebrew and maybe someone eventually plays or makes a better version of old salt. And then I put it on the website and I'm like, Hey, everyone try this, see what you think. And when it comes, when it comes to some of the, when it comes to the idea of custom missions, what would that, um, what would that, what would that entail? And what would that, what would that change with the normal sandbox? Uh, so like right now, I'm think I have six faction specific missions. Uh, so like if you wanted to make a custom mission, you could be like it's going to be the Eternals versus the Forgotten, mm-hmm. and you could even like cap one of the abilities and be like the Eternals lost their wave ability and they have to do this to get it back, and the Forgotten are like hiding out in like the fringes of the map, but the Eternals have their transcendent ability so they can pop in and out. Um, so it's just like. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to limit, or anything you want to add, you could kind of just explore, explore the options, I guess. Yeah, this might be a this might be a dumb this might be a dumb idea, but since we're de- since we're dealing with pirates, it's so- it's something that I it's something that I'm con- I consider um at least at least from at least from my own table, and that it and that is putting in a kraken rule. <laughs> Ooh, there is a kraken on my board. Uh, I've People have often been like, are you going to make an expansion with like monsters? I was like, that would be sweet. Uh, I would love to have a Kraken system. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. I w- if I w- it was just it was just something it was just something that popped in my head about ha- about having whoever has the whoever has the lowest amount of lowest amount of islands can can control the Kraken as a bit of a um, balancer. Oh, I do like that idea. It's, yeah. I'm a, I'm a catch up mechanic. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of um of making of putting in rules so that even even if you're in the lead, you're not exactly safe. Um, to put to put it another way, just because just because you're in the lead doesn't mean that somebody can't doesn't mean that um somebody can't um get lu- get lucky in the back and and get a blue shell. <laughs> True, one hundred percent. Yeah, that catch up mechanic is important, and I think a kraken would be a really good. I'm gonna write it down. Mm-hmm. Write it down. Oh. Um. Especially, especially since it it also it also be a ni- it also be a nice way to um for wh- whoever is le- ever is last to give a bit of a middle finger. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But I I'd um I would if you end up doing something like that I wouldn't recommend using that for two player games. Oh, agreed. You'd be just tossing it back and forth. Mm-hmm. That's, so- yeah. that's something that. That's something that is is best served in four in four player games where with maximum amounts of chaos. Agreed, or even a three player game where it's two people versus the person who controls the kraken. Mm-hmm. You're opening up a whole exciting can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the final thing is that you c- shooting at the kraken is some is something you can do. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> in the same way, I wouldn't advise going up, going up against a, going, picking a fight with a fully manned Abrams with not with nothing but a pocket knife. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm think I'm thinking that if um that the only that it's 
with the with something like that, I think I think bending the rules is natural. So that say the only way you're hitting it is is if you roll a six, and that's mm -hmm. and that's not going to take it out. It's just going to stall it. Yeah, it's going to make it go back underwater, kind of recover, lick its wounds a little bit. Yeah, but it'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that idea. Oh. Um. And I, I will I will admit I'm kind of drawing on that on the whole un the whole unkillable enemy that you had to run away from, um, like say Nemesis in Resident Evil Three or the Sand Wraith in um, Prince of Persia. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, just just something to just something to remind you that just because just because you might be you might be able to you might be able to kick a lot of a, a lot of ass when it comes to normal <laughs> enemies. There's always there's always a bigger fish. Yes. Um, Insert Star Wars Episode One right here. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the I'm pretty sure the I'm pretty sure the fan Inquisition is going to um is going to have me is going to have me tried from bring from bring up Episode <laughs> One, but um I love the prequel memes. I don't know about you, but I love them. Oh, I they're do. a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, and and um for and. Well, as far well as far as the fanboy Inquisition, this is this is not this is this is this is not your this is not your norm this is not your normal your normal Star Wars forum. This is the temple. Yes, we, we operate we op we do things differently here. <laughs> <laughs> and now with with that with that kind of thing in, with that kind of thing in mind, um, did. Even, even I know you mentioned analysis paralysis, which is which is amusing to me because usually I'm the one who has to bring that up. <laughs> but, but um, but when it came when it, but even with that, were there were there have have you had moments in testing where pe where people um were a bit were a bit hesitant even with the, even with the setup that you have about what um action to take? Typically. Only first-time players have that, or at least a notable amount of analysis paralysis, and it's usually kind of only on the first round because they're like, "What do you mean I can do whatever I want? What do you mean I can sail my ship, shoot, and if I still had sail left, I could continue sailing that ship?" Or like, it's just the sheer amount of freedom that they have. I think a lot of board gamers are used to being put in a box of like, "This is your phase order, and you have to do it in this order every single time." Mm -hmm. And that's part of the fun, which to each their own. But they have a little bit of a sense of overwhelming analysis paralysis with the first round. But then on the second round, they're like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And it gets better and better each round after that. And by the time they're like ready for the second game, they know exactly what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And with, with that kind of thing in, with that kind of thing in mind, um, like it, is if I'm not mistaken, let me let me let me do a let me do a proper count with the components. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen islands. Um, mm -hmm. In some of the in, was that was that a number that had been fairly consistent with the with, when it came to the number of islands, or were or were there pre or the, were there previous shots that um that had more or less I islands on the board oh that's a good question i believe i had 12 at one point and then i had i think i maybe tried 15 one time like an island in the very center mm -hmm. and then i had 14 and i tried to make it as symmetrical as possible um yeah so i think 14 has been the one for the last two or three years but i think way back when there was a little bit probably like two or three months where it was like 12 and then 15 and then I solidified on fourteen. Mm -hmm. And when it came when it came to tr when it came to trying fifteen, was it a, was it a case where um where 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 there were just too where there were just too many for for um for smaller groups? Yeah, it was it was too many options for like the two player games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because fourteen is crowded either way. But f two player game, you're like we got so much space, and that's also why we have those ocean tokens. But ratio wise, it synced up really well to have fourteen islands instead of fifteen. I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing the tra the trade wind rule was to was to help speed up um, movement in ca in case the starting island is significantly further away than normal. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. And then also to kind of add in some possibilities later on in the game. So like at the beginning, I don't have trade wins active because I don't want anyone reaching another island on round one. I want that first round to be like an exploration, getting yourself in position, but no worries if you don't, Mm -hmm. because you can always have the feature. And that really helps experienced players and new players kind of get on the same level after one round. Um, But in the later game, when all trade wins are up and active, like you can do some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you can sail in do wave and no one expected you to do wave and or you can like sail in and do your hazard detonate take an island somewhere else it's a lot of options Mm -hmm. now you are now as i understand it you're also working on a on a port for the game onto um steam correct Um, yep how how did how did tell me about the chain of events that led to that um, project's development Oh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, so I used to make music. I guess I still technically can slash if I had a client that was there. But I make music for video games on the side. It's just like a fun side hobby. But uh, one of my original clients, uh, Michael Nisha, he was making a game and I made the music for him. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, but eventually he didn't need any more music. So we kind of just like side chatted and then eventually he came across old salt and he's like wow this is pretty cool and he's like would you ever want a video game of old salt and he was kind of needing to explore a new engine i think it was the godot engine but so i was like yeah so it's kind of like i scratch his back he scratches mine um and now we're kind of situated where he's got the video game side video game world of old salt kind of he's working on developing it we still have bugs because it's an alpha uh, and we tried to play it yesterday, me and you, and that didn't pan out very well. But eventually, it'll be fully multiplayer and bug-free and all of that fun stuff. And we're also going to have tutorial missions on it and the campaign, alternate game modes. It's just going to be the full Old Salt experience, but animated and on on video game side. Mm-hmm. And with the, with that with all that in mind... Um... What would you be shooting for as far as a release window for Old Salt? I think we're aiming for December of this year. Uh, Let me check real quick. Old Salt. Yeah, I think it's going to be aimed for December. But we might need more time. Uh, But I think it's currently set for December. Yeah, that's why why I phrased it as um, window and not date. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So right now he's got it as release date as 24th of December. I'm going to need to talk to him about it just to see how he feels about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's entirely possible that we'll release it with all of the missions and multiplayer fully capable. um, But we'll keep on working on it and improving it as time goes on. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Well, with, with, with with that said, um, I will certainly, I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing how it, de- how it develops, and I do want, I, and I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. <laughs> I had a blast. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. And anytime you see fit to return, whether it's to, whether it's to talk more about pirates, about, about, um, about. About why about why talk like a pirate day is overrated, or just or just to just to do a glorified shit post. The door <laughs> is always open. Love as it. I, as I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> I love it. It is liquid courage. That's for darn sure. Yep. Also, um, since I have to get this joke out of my system, why is the rum gone? <laughs> love it. Love it. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>